41. 41. <laughs> I was waiting for an answer, but then we did, you just started the podcast. I just started it because <laughs> we're still here. <laughs> I see. I love it. I love it's the it. official opening. Wait, I'm not sure why I'm stirring this all the way. I just poured it, so I didn't need to stir it. You can always use a little more stirring. Oh, that's true. A little magic. I like this spoon. But you cut out the part where we're talking about my spoon. So. Did I? I don't remember if I did or I not. I think so. Okay, so po- podcast. Topic. So I had a dream slash download on... I don't know, like three or four days ago, maybe. I think so. I've been con- I've been contemplating it for three or four days. I'm not sure if you have been contemplating it or not. But the like the secret of the universe, I think, is what this comes down to. Is that, and so I, I will I will preface this. Everyone will receive this at the level where they need where they are right now right so at the level where you are right now so what you will get out of this message or you'll get out of this download is exactly what you need to get out um but then just like everything else it kind of grows and develops on itself to where you'll be able to understand more and more of what i'm saying as as each person's individualized development progresses does that make sense yeah yeah so like as profound as it is to me right now it might not be as profound to somebody else who's hearing it, but as they do more and more um, like self-awareness practice or just actualization into like their being, it will become, you know, basically like the answer to everything. And I know I'm pressing this with like a lot of stuff, but I think that's important to say. So stick with this for as long as you can, one. And two... Uh, now it's about the time that people start dropping off on YouTube. So no, that's fine. Uh, yeah, tell, remind them to stick within. Well, no, but oh, wait a minute. Well, no, they will. They. I'm talking about you. <laughs> no, people, people will get overwhelmed, and then that overwhelm will basically bring up frustration and anger. And... Uh, yeah, frustration, or or if you're not realizing it, that it's frustration and anger. It will be um, this like unknown discomfort. And then because the discomfort is quite literally undoing something that is holding you hostage to the current status quo, similar to the yoga this morning. And so I will never preface that if you are going to start feeling the need to pull away, um, that's why. Notice it. Notice it. Yeah. Be aware of it. And then, then see if you can like allow yourself to feel. But yeah, so the the download that I got, and so I will maybe section it off. And if I'm not making things clear, maybe your job would be to That's actually always my job to clarify things. Right? Why you feel proud of that? That's right. I have a job. I have a job. Ah, yes, finally, I'm useful for something. Now Somebody people, will love now you. People will love me. <laughs> I'm here to fix cars and try to clarify things. Fix cars? Fix cars. Oh, fix cars. And try to oh, clarify are things. You, you're announcing your car fixing. That's the say I'm useful. People love me. Oh, is that why you felt useful yesterday? <laughs> I got a lot done yesterday. Okay. Okay. So to the to the actual topic. So I'll, maybe I'll start with this. The universe that we live in, or how about this? Our understanding of our perception is classified has classified itself through i will not name names here um has been classified in the binary sequence away and so what i mean by binary sequence is we classify everything in either yeses or nos or being or not being or ones and zeros on and off on and off true and false true and false so everything that we have here functions in the binary circumstances. Pol- pol- polarized. Uh, polarized to extent, but I'm not even saying polarized. I'm not even saying du- split dualistically. This is actually deeper than that. What I'm saying is it is functions, and this is the, probably the essence of it, in existence 
and non-existent. There's no spectrum. It's all the way on or all the way off. Like that? No. Spectrum spectrum doesn't even need to come in. We just classify things in like ones. So ones and zeros. Either it's there or not there. Present or non-existent. So existence or non-existence. And that's it. Right? I, what I'm not saying is there needs to be a spectrum. I, I'm not saying that. What I'm actually saying is or how it's, I will start with how we're perceiving things right now. This is how we're perceiving things right now. So everything that we have known thus far, right, has been, for all intents and purposes, unless you're already aware of this, right, and you're past this. But if we are listening to this and you go, what the fuck is she talking about? It's either life or no life, right? Existence or no existence. And that is the key to keeping us in the place where we have been for millennia. The key for us to be in a state that we have been, have always known and have always felt comfortable with is to continue to function in this binary sequencing of ones and zeros, of existence and non-existence. And so by default, what that does is it builds what came up to me as a term. So I will start defining the term. This is not that maybe the term how everybody's using right now, but it is a term of localized consciousness. So our localized consciousness then is the definition that I'm drawing here is then by all means associated with binary operations. And so... Like either you have a localized consciousness or you don't? Yeah. But our localized consciousness is fixated or is defined or is being built on ones and zeros of binary sequencing of yeses and no. With me so far? Yeah. Okay. So... That is the world that we are familiar with right now. The world of ones and zeros. Uh, and, you know, to some extent, I wanted to say, I mean, you're a software engineer, so, you know, our computer programming literally is done in ones and zeros. Right. And it's it's ones and zeros by convention. It's, you know, there, there needs, you know, there's some way to, at the very, very base of it, to, to signify that some that they're you know it could be a and b it could be star and moon it could be it could be anything you know one and zero is just a nice way and it doubles as you know one is like on and zero is off and and you know yeah yeah but there's nothing inherently but, special about one and zero other than that is just the convention that we've, we've yeah that's on. just the terminology the, yeah. the code you know like whenever you see hacking someone hacking yeah on some uh, stock video there's always ones and zeros running for right. some reason, horizontal, vertically. What? Well, that's supposed to be the Matrix, reminiscent of the Matrix. Is that where it came from? Yeah. Before except, the Matrix didn't exist. Everybody does it wrong. It makes me upset. You know, here is what everybody does, and where there's ones and zeros running down the screen, and every character is is not moving. Right. I'm never gonna be able to size it to this. The actual Matrix, they like dripped down the str- the screen, and the characters themselves moved down. This is super pedantic nitpick. Pedant- are you say, wait, are you explain how the Matrix the movie is or how actually coding is? Because my understanding of coding has actually nothing to do it has with nothing dropping. to do with that. That just looks cool. <laughs> yeah. Or so no, so it's both like, it's of like, those it's things. It's like the are, equations, you know. So both of those things the, are completely the, useless. The, the meme equations. Yeah. Yeah. As far as real software development, there's no running and falling ones and zeros. Back in the day there was. Well, no, no, there's no there's falling, no falling ones and zeros. Ra- there's Back no in- range of ones and zeros. Well, back, I mean, when I say back in the day, I mean way back in the day, the earliest computers, you literally had to flip eight switches on and off and then press the button and that entered that next byte. A byte would be eight one. bits. A, a, bit, one. a bit is a one or a zero. Yeah. And you do eight of them, you press the button and that logs one more. And you do it yeah. again, chunk, do it again, chunk. And you would, that's how you would like literally enter a program, which would suck. <laughs> right? Can you imagine? Mm. And then, we, start somewhere. and then we evolved the punch cards, which is basically punching ones and zeros into paper. You know, a zero is literally a hole and a one is the lack of a hole. Yeah, existence or non-existence. Right. And uh, I, I guess that sucks less than flipping switches, but not by much. And then, you know, now we have keyboards and eventually AI will write it all for us. Yeah. And or we'll Neuralink think it into the computer or something. I don't know. Yeah, and so that's the extension I want to draw is we... If we continue to function in the binary 
sequence way of existence and not existence of ons and offs of yeses and nos, right? will continue to propagate the narrative that has been a reality, you know, for millennia. And so what everybody talks about that is the existence of the veil, right? Like if you heard term the veil is, it is not, so wait, is this the right time for me to say this or not? Okay. No, it's not the right time. Okay. So the veil, right? is then the difference between localized and non-localized consciousness. Okay, I will say that about the veil right now. So if we have localized consciousness that is defined by the bits of ones and zeros or existence and non-existence, our world, right, exists in that scope of existence and non-existence, right? And then everything that we have designed and everything that we do and everything we propagate and the way we function very much within us has us programmed with that definition. It, that definition is quite literally at the core of our existence. Right, because it seems like how could it be any other way? This cup either exists or it doesn't. I either exist or I don't. Yes. And you could say I exist in that I'm, I have matter or I exist in that I'm, I'm still alive, you know, whatever exist means. But it's like, you know, this is metal or it's not. Yeah. There's, there's a... We, we, we have, we cannot possibly i say this up until recent point we would not be have been able to comprehend what it is like to say that ones and zeros or existence and non-existence is somehow a limiting scope of understanding right the, so may, you know that's that has been our reality and we have we are holding on to that very tightly uh maybe you'll get there but this makes me think of you know yes in traditional computers there's ones and zeros but in quantum computer quantum computers there are qubits which are maybe a little one and maybe a little zero and maybe a little bit of both yeah and there's a uh, probability distribution as to what they are yeah which is really weird because at at our level of experience we don't see that there aren't things that are kind of there and kind of not. That is not that is not a 3D human experience. And yeah. so it's like impossible to wrap our, our heads around. What does it mean that it's, you know, kind of one and kind of zero? Yeah. And yeah, so so that that would be a good transition. So quantum computing starts to touch on this concept. Well, not not just quantum computing, quantum quantum physics, quantum mechanics. Yeah. Like, you know, in in the olden days, the original model, the Bohr model of the electron, you know, the electron's here, and then it's here, and then it's here, you know, depending on how many electrons you have. But turns out, in the real world, quote, quote, it's not there. It's like somewhere inside of this shell, maybe, Prob probably. And, you know, the shell is like a probability distribution. But it could be, like... Anywhere, it's just less likely to, you know, outside of the shell, the probability falls off to, to near zero, but it's never actually zero. Um, which, is, which is bizarre, because again, things don't work like that in the real world. But they really do work like that in the real world. They don't work like that to, to us. That's not what we see. Um, fun fact, that's how um, SSDs, like flash memory in, in, your, in your phone and in, in computers, they use quantum tunneling or quantum whatever, you know, to like push electrons in and then it's, it's a one and then you pull electrons out and then it's a zero. But because of this, you know, the inherent uncertainty at the quantum level, sometimes it'll just pop in or pop out. And so if you just leave a, uh, a, a hard drive or a flash drive or whatever, an SSD hard drive uh, out and about, not plugged in for an extended period of time, over a year, uh, some ones will turn into zeros and some zeros will turn into ones. If it's plugged in, it's constantly refreshing it so that it, you know, it doesn't, it won't lose anything. But if it's just out, eh, all bets are off. And then what? Like, you cannot store data securely? You can't reliably store data on SSDs for an extended period of time. Now, yeah. they, make, they make some SSDs that, that are more tolerant to that. They may have, like, backup bits or something. I don't know, a parity to check. 
Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, SSDs but left, are not le- a long-term archival storage solution. Le- left on its own, it will uh, right. revert to other states. Uh, the, in- the entropy that things tend to. Uh, spinning magnetic disk platters are reliable in a powered-off state. Hard drive. Re- conventional, old-school hard drives, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Do they even make those anymore? Yeah. Oh, so yeah. we have in our hard drive box. Oh, okay. Because they're a lot bigger and a lot cheaper. And a lot slower. Yeah. But. And a lot hotter. Yeah. Yeah. Well, once and zeros produces a lot of heat. Well, it's got a big thing in there spinning it, you know, two times a second. Well, no, to, to, to propagate. Wait. To propagate the the idea of being and not being takes a lot of heat. Right? It takes a lot of work to propagate an idea of existence and non existence, right? So we are at all times exhausted. Right. The reason why we need to recharge and go into the world of non binary functionality when we dream is because throughout the day this is overheating. Right. We're sp- spend a lot of times like propagating a software program that is unnatural to our being even though it seems natural right and so yeah so so here's what i guess here's what i wanted to go after that um this whole thing started with me uh going through maybe two or three weeks worth of uh, rape and Molly and Rufy dreams. <laughs> so I know that whole kind of like brush through that. Um, and everything that that comes down to, if somebody is raping you or you're being raped or you're raping someone or if you're being mollied or you're being roofied or you're mollying yourself or you're roofing yourself or you're running away from someone or whatever it is, it just comes down to control, right? And so I struggle with it for like the longest time. What is it that my subconscious is fighting to control? And then, you know, Elliot was there with me, like <laughs> flabbergasted about what to say. <laughs> uh, but it got very interesting. Got, it got to the point where I, in my dream, was actually mauling and roofing myself for the rape. It was, it was very interesting. So it was kind of like this uh, paradoxical struggle of psyche trying to take over the subconscious, right? And I'm like, that is the strangest override that I have ever experienced. And it was very visceral. Um, be, because, right, you feel like you are, you're fighting yourself inside. Right. And you're like, what is it that I'm fighting? Right. And it's, yeah, in your particular dream, that was your way of controlling the situation to get out of control, kind of? In a way. Yeah. But in the last dream, this basically the last sequencing where the download actually came in, I realized our perception of non-existence is all but detrimental, detrimental to to us, right? The idea that we exist as a one and that we do not exist as a zero. And then that concept of non-existence, right? We drown if we were to adapt, that is our truth. If, if you were to take the idea that I am going to surrender into a zero, right? To us, it is almost like incomprehensible. And I'm not even saying this in some way relates to fear of death. But it's slightly different. It is bigger than just a fear of death, right? It is... Surrender into complete takeaway of all form because we're so married to form holding everything that we know. And to, I don't know if that comes through or not, that is bigger than death. Does that come through or not? What do you mean form? Just form. Like our form. Like everything. This, 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 this. Lights. You know, fans. The, cats, the universe. The, just form. 
what, what we perceive as form. It's not the universe, what we perceive as form. In our local consciousness, we perceive everything as an existence within the state of form. And so the, the bits of ones and zeros or existence and non-existence, the non-existence to us is not just death. It is, death is almost like too shallow. It's like not deep enough. But what we're actually afraid of is the non-existence of form. Right? Per personalized? Our own form? Or the form, form? Or the form of the spoon? All form. All form. The complete deterioration of this. If we took... If we, let's say we took earth and we said, okay, well, earth exists in three-dimensional consciousness that, you know, that is not true, but let's just say you know, three-dimensional consciousness. And then we, you know, we, we have mountains and we have rivers and we have sun and then the sun, you know, has, creates the magnetic field or earth magnetic field protects us from the sun. And so therefore we have oxygen and we have hydrogen and then we have nitrogen and then all of those chemicals kind of like con con uh, convalesce together and then we have life. And then that, all of that, perception of all of that is where we sit subconsciously and the deepest fear that we face is actually not death. It is not rape. It is not lack of control. It is seizing of existence of us in the form of zero, in the form of non-existence. So... Of all us. Like of all the of entire, us. just... I'm not even talking about human. I'm not talking about human. I'm talking about form, existence of form, okay. like all form. In, in as much as the ceasing of all form is the ceasing of everything. Everything. And to us, that is bad. To, I mean, that is the ultimate catastrophe. Cata ultimate catastrophe. Where are you going? Ah, uh, I think she's rearranging. But being within the understanding that. We actually never let ourselves touch on that realm. Like day to day, right? Do you walk around wanting to touch the realm that there's a possibility of non existence? No. Right. And so the biggest point of fear that you have in your mind is what? Um, I mean, easy answer is death, but. I'm not particularly worried about death, right? What are you doing? Right now? But I can see if like, if there, if you have this idea that you're not coming back after death, and in fact, everything is ceasing, you know, not just, you know, I mean, every, everyone that you love, everyone, everyone, and everything, everything. Yeah. That sounds pretty bad. Yeah, but we don't let ourselves touch on that. Right? We don't we can, walk around allowing ourselves to touch that realm. I mean, there's, there's like disaster movies where the Earth's going to explode or get or get wiped out by a meteor, but that's that's not even it. That's okay. It's not that it ceased to be. It's now it's turned into dust. It still exists, just not in a useful state. Yeah, you're saying it's it's just gone. Yeah. It's it's poofed out of existence. Mm -hmm. If the universe is is a is somebody's dream, that that person wakes up. Sure. Right. That is the localized consciousness. Our localized consciousness function rudimentary, and in fact, was designed to function in that state of being. Like everything we have ever known. Now, I will open that statement up to, like, if you have done some actualization work and if you have done some deep diving and you touched on, um, like, galactic interpretations of humanity or um, other dimensional interpretations of humanity, you might get other ideas now. But, and then I will, I guess, add on to that. Everybody is starting to feel something different right now, right? I 100% I agree with that. I mean, you can just look out there and almost everybody is flipping out to some degree, visibly or not. Y yes, but I, but I want to say here's why, right? Here's why. It's because what's coming in into our dimension right now or into our existence or the perception of form is the non-localized non consciousness, right? And this is my, this is where it comes down to me, you know, 
roofing and mollying and being raped for the last month. <laughs> we are having to surrender right now into the concept of a zero or not non-existence. Let's say as a collective. Having never even been able to touch the idea that there is such thing as not zero. So Say that again in a different way. So we have we, our our civilization, the form of all of our existence, the the essence of human consciousness has been set up and is quite literally is an experiment into the extension of what it means for us to live and function in the ones and zeros in the binary sequencing. The, the whole point of humanity so far has been let's run an experiment on binary sequencing and, and then see what that world is. And that world is extremely nuanced and is extremely real and is extremely full of life because everything we have ever experienced has been so visceral due to the binary sequencing of our, of our everything. Almost like if there wasn't this fear of the zero, we wouldn't be able to enjoy the one. Sure. I mean, I've, I don't remember who said it, but um, it's like the best thing about life is that it comes to an end. Because if it didn't, we wouldn't enjoy it. Yeah, the best thing about life is actually us believing that it will come to an end. Otherwise, well, sure. there you we, go. we wouldn't enjoy it. <laughs> right. Because, you know, it's like, you know, oh, imagine you live forever. It's like, no, no, no. Forever, forever. You know, like. Yeah, yeah. Hundreds of trillions of years yeah. is still nothing compared to forever. Yeah. And it's like, oh, that is, it, and it's, you know, you think, oh, you know, I'm going to live to 500. Oh my gosh, that's so long. No, forever. Forever. It's like, yeah. It, it, oh. No, the. It doesn't even. No, it, by design, humanity. It's crazy. The, by design, humanity was created in order to experience the very visceral understanding of being and not being and then by design we decided to have the being be what it is in order to maximize the being yeah right? literally the whole the whole point is being so let's let's be Woo. All right so like we have this experiment has literally has has delivered us the essence of all nuance right um i just the other day, we went to the pool and uh, I went for a swim in the morning and it was a little chilly, you know, like the outside was maybe 60 something degrees and the water was, I don't know, maybe, I don't know what the temperature water was, but but I swam for a long time and I come out and, you know, my body's like in, in you know, like a little shivery, right? And I, we drive home and I start to take a shower and I turn on the warm shower. And the net difference between a cold body that has been you know, cold for, let's say, 40 minutes or 50 minutes into the first input of information that is warmth, that is warm water, was such a visceral experience, right? That I'm like, oh my gosh, what we experience here on this planet is so nuanced. It, it is so, I mean, over the top. If you, I mean, you know, that's just, that's just, you know, cold body to hot water. I mean, there's the idea of like taking a bite of the most delicious food and like the anticipation and the, you know, the salvation and the, the salvation, but also salvation, I guess. Um, you write the buildup that, you know, it, it, it takes over. It quite right. literally takes over your being. I mean, it feels like that's like the point of, uh, of being a human is to enjoy life. Yeah. But, but I guess what I will point out is the whole point of humanity is to experience that so viscerally right. that this is the life to have. I mean, there's a danger there because, you know, I, get, I imagine heroin's probably pretty nice. No, and, and, and hence, and, and and hence the addictions and ha hence our vices. That we, through this input of binary sequencing, experience things extremely viscerally. It's a, it's a, it's a ride, right? In fact, like 
if somebody who says like, oh, yes, you're going to come on earth and you're going to have a mild life and everything will be hunky dory. You know, we'll just sit by the lakeside staring out and choose the sunrises and the sunsets and, and that will be your life. Right. We'll be like, what? That is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. No, I'm going to go. Save, save that for retirement. <laughs> no, but, but, but right, like that is to say that. But even at retirement, let's be honest, you know, you are. At most, let's say I'm exaggerating here, 10 years in of that, you're like, okay, I kind of want something else. Yeah, that's, that's, that's like, that sounds like a vacation. It doesn't sound like a, it doesn't sound like a great vacation to me. Right. But. but we are, so what I want to say is we are driven, our entire life force as earth, as cumulative earth, as one body is driven by the force, the centrifugal force of binary sequencing of being and not being. Right. And the, all these, all these experiences, it's not only the good experiences, you know, the bad experiences are visceral too. Yeah. Oh, yes. I'm saying all the good stuff. But yes, I mean, that is why we dive in. We create life of bad. So it's another level of visceral. We, we, we love the visceral, right? Mm. And so I, I, so I will say that. So, so that is localized consciousness. Localized consciousness as a collective has us held in in that understanding, like quite literally by design. If you think of a computer program that does not, or a system that does not exist, right? Uh, like that just say, there's just a blank slate. There's nothing there. There's not even such thing as a blank slate. So there's just nothing. And then if you were to go code a rudimentary system, rudimentary program then goes, okay, if, if, this is a, if this is the case, then this is an A. And if that's the case, then it's the B, right? That is the, like the most rudimentary switch, right? If you just code that, that is an idea of being and not being, right? And so if you just insert from nothing, from non-existence, this idea of being and not being, oh my gosh, quite literally a whole other world comes on board. And that is what happened. So I remember a time where that was conceptualized. Uh, the the excitement, I, I remember the excitement that I felt uh, not necessarily in the form of the idea to bring in a world into the experience where there is a concept of zero. And it was, I mean, when I remembered then that I told you that, that I have this memory now, it was just like the most exciting I have ever felt in all existence. <laughs> Right, but the memory of that transferred into my body here, and I'm like, oh, I remember the conceptualization of that idea, and I remember the design of bringing that into form, and I remember how visceral uh, it felt to have this unlimited potential. It's quite literally unlimited potential. Right, and so we, we need that zero to balance the one, but at the same time, we're terrified of the zero. So I want to say yes. So the reason why I'm able to remember it all is because I went through this more, you know, um, Molly Rufi. For all I know, I, I was, this is a side note. There's probably a pill that is a Molly and the Rufi combined. I just don't know it. So to me, like my limited understanding of drugs, I know of Rufi's and I know of Molly's and they might be actually called something else right now. But back in the 2000s, that's what they were called. <laughs> uh, so when I heard those terms, that's, that's the, like what came into my mind. And whenever I was having my rape dream, um, the definition that I received was a Molly and the Rufi, just because that is something I can conceptualize. But there's probably one pill that is a combo of the both. I'm sure someone's familiar with it. But uh, so I don't think anyone voluntarily takes Rufis. I do in my dreams. <laughs> I know people are, you know, taking ecstasy voluntarily. So e well, ecstasy is Molly. Yeah. Yeah. So, but I don't know that anyone would. Voluntarily do Rufi. I don't know. Maybe there's there's no way that somebody voluntarily did not take Rufi. I'm sure they probably have. Hey, the, let's see what happens. Yeah, I mean, it, I could see how you'd be plausible like plausible deniability, Your Honor. <laughs> I could see it would be super fun to take a Rufi and then to go like have somebody walk by your side recording everything it that would you be, do. It would be really interesting, and then go through the conceptualized <clears throat> reality of. Seeing yourself, rewatching yourself, do all the stuff that you did, and having zero collection of it. Um, our our son had his wisdom teeth taken out, and when he came out of his uh, general anesthesia, you know he's 
awake and walking around more or less. And he's talking. But he wasn't even himself. His huh? personality was there. Yeah. But like we were halfway home before it wore off I enough recorded that, him. Yeah. I recorded him all throughout. And, and, and I we, actually did this. And we played it back. Like, and he's like, I don't remember any of that. Right. And, but take that concept. No, it's weird. No, but take that concept. And this is what I'm trying to say between localized and non-localized consciousness, right? It is what's coming in right now is non-localized consciousness that we, for all intents and purposes, do not know where to place in our localized consciousness. If I were to show you 20 years of your life where you did all these other things and you like, let's say, had a wife and you, you know, I don't know had children and then you went to work and, and you were, I don't know, a carpenter. Okay. okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's careful, go- careful there. That's <laughs> going somewhere, right? Interesting. Um, right. And so from that, um, right from that, then you would be like, wait, what? Right. And so <laughs> you're just, you're, it's, you're watching a movie of somebody else, but it happens to be you. It's you, right. Yeah. It's you. Now, let's say you're in a different form and you're male versus a female and you are, you know, right. but, but this is not dissimilar when you have your past lives come in. Like I have a lot of my past lives are coming in and they're more visceral than not at this point, right? Like, and I'm having a hard time differentiating between this life and any one lifetime and like the knowledge just is seeping in, right? All of that, what's happening right now to everyone is our known localized consciousness. And what I mean by that, everything that is us, that is our truth, that we have no way of placing it because we believe in the binary sequences of zeros, some people will be losing their mind. So, right, we will be losing our mind because in our binary sequence world, there is yes of everything that I know and perceive, and then there's a zero of non-existence. But if something comes in from non-localized consciousness that is your truth, here's the caveat, you will have very hard time dealing with that perception and being able to place it. And it, in basically for all intents and purposes, what I went through, viscerally fight the concept of a one when all you can hold is a zero. Is there a... Um... Is there a connection to, uh, like, not non-attachment here, like, what do you mean? Buddhist Buddhist style non-attachment, where like, In if some... we're not, if if we're not, if I have no attachment to the cup, then whether the cup exists or not doesn't matter to me. Yes, There's no charge there. And so, when the Buddhists taught the teaching of non-attachments, what they were actually teaching, and this is, you know is the idea that there is no such thing as a zero. Now, at the time, they were not saying that, and at the time, we were not ready to be in the space where we could receive that. Because I, I was- But a- for all intents and purposes, yes, if you did not have attachment, by default, you would create a world where there is just is, and is by default is a one. I guess I took it as, it may be a one or maybe a zero, don't, don't get attached to being a one or a that zero. That is the beginning of not losing your mind. What they're trying to teach is how do you stay in the space, right? So here's what Buddhism is, right? Buddhism is a teaching that basically understands the world of non-binary, uh, of non-binary action and then thus non-localized consciousness and then the truth of all existence, which is one and one or the way I was giving it is, is I and the one. But those are the same thing, right? And if you think about it uh, in English la- language, if you write a one, you know, in, the, in, a, in Russian or Ukrainian, one is very, it has a little uh, tail. Or, or, or flur, you know, it has, so you could just run one, one as a stick, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but but, it, uh, but the way I was taught is one was different. Uh, there's not an I in Russian. So Cyrillic language does not um, imply into this. But, but um, you know, in English, we have an I that is very much written the same, same way as a one, mm-hmm. right? Could be like on an apple, right? Whenever I'm typing, right? On, 
an inward right and right. it's in what's That's, the difference? Yeah. I capital I lower lowercase L and numeric one. Yeah. yeah. Depending on the on the font can be almost yeah, indistinguishable. But but the same thing and uh, just numeric font, but think about it if you go into uh, Roman numerals, one is an I. Roman numerals which famously have no concept of zero. Yes. So from that, the teaching was already there to understand that there is no such thing as separation from an I and a one or one and a one and an I and an I. And I had heard this before and, and we heard it again when we watched the Joe Rogan uh, interview with Terrence Howard. Terrence Howard. Um, so I think it's true because I've, I've heard it twice now that well, I know that I know that the the Arabic numerals, which are the numerals we use now, when you think of one, two, three, those numbers, yeah, those are the um, invented uh, by the by the by the Arabs. Um, they invented zero, but it was uh, I had heard that this it was for the purpose of like accounting and monetary yeah, yeah, yeah. stuff. So. We need a zero in order to know that you don't have any money or you don't owe anything or it's worth nothing or whatever. And, you know, that helps wrap over in base 10. You have to, after nine, you get to 10, one, zero. Just like in binary, after, after zero, there's one. After one, there's one, zero. Same, same thing, just a different number of them. Um, but it is interesting that m it's about money. Yeah, came down to money. But in numeral in Roman numerals, right? We have a concept of an X, right? As as a ten. As a ten, mm -hmm. right? it's not a zero, right? Right. So and we just start stacking them. The problem is that they get unwieldy. No, no, I'm not saying that is the form we should come back. What I'm saying is the base teaching that the Buddhism and uh, Hinduism and um, The real teachings of Jesus, not, you know, current uh, modern day Christian teachings of Jesus and the real teaching of mystic, mystic Judaism, not the current day Judaism, um, all teach the concepts of holding the concept, right? And so in Buddhism, holding the concept of non-attachment is there to assign an understanding to potentiality of ones and then zeros and zeros not being zeros and ones not being ones, right? Okay, it, I, I never took it that, that second step. Right. But if you if we're married to the concept of binary sequencing and our entire world lives in binary sequencing and we live in binary sequencing and the essence of our existence is comprehended by existence, I mean like literally the conceptualized form of nothing to everything as far as, you know, the rudimentary system of design of a switch to an A to a B, right? We would lose our mind if we were told, oh, guess what? There's no such thing as a zero. And then, but then what we're actually being told right now, oh, guess what? There's no such thing as a zero because zero is actually a one. And our psyche, and this is what my, I'm going back to my, my rape sequencing. Our psyche has is basically right now is required to dive in into the zero so much to where we would be able to rebirth ourselves as one. What do you mean? It's almost like <laughs> in order for us to to accept the known localized consciousness that is coming in into our existence right now. In order for us to do that, we have to, for all intents and purposes, integrate the concept of the zero so much that the zero becomes one. Where, right, so you have to go through the gates, in my case of rape and mauling and roofing, in order to then come out with the understanding that the holdup that I'm having in this scenario, right, of why I'm being raped and roofied and mollied and why am I raping and roofing and mollying myself is because I'm having a hard time surrendering into the zero so that I can travel through the zero 
and then actualize myself into the understanding of one and one. When you say one and one, are you saying that there is no zero? Yes. But but that is not saying, oh, let's go, oh, la, 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 all of a sudden there's no zero, there's one. No, the existential point of our existence lays in the quantity or the quality of both of ones and zeros, of binary sequencing. And so for, for me to simply say, I, what I'm telling right, you right now is how you would go through the process of accepting the move beyond the veil of localized consciousness into no localized consciousness and not lose your mind. And not lose, and be able to accept that and integrate that. And then have that become as your truth. Have it become as, not become as your new truth, accept your actual truth. Right. But the, there's, it's so nuanced. For someone to accept non-localized consciousness would be a process of integration in such way that you open the zero into a one. When you say non-localized consciousness, do you mean that consciousness is everywhere, so it's just the universal consciousness? And that it's not local, it's everywhere? So, so yeah, so this is another thing that I wanted to address. There's three states of being, right? There's the I and one, that is the first state of being, and that is really the only state of being. The true state of being is I and one. And that is almost easier for us to touch and understand. Like for me, it is very easy to touch and understand because now I remember how it is to design and how to be a particle and how to create and how to destroy. Um, but right, you can touch on that. You can touch that essence of creation, the, the point of stillness where everything and anything exists. Can you touch on that world? Yeah. Okay. And that, that is the world of I or the world of one, or the truth is, is the world of one and one, or I and I, or I and one. Okay. And then depending on your interpretation, the, the nuance is there's one, and then you are an I in the one. Does that make sense? Right? Then, like, right, if you, if you, have, if you, if you have the essence of existence that is one, right, you, right, can you see one not as a number, but one as a concept? Like, like, the all one? The all one. Let's say all one. We'll use the term all one if it's bigger. Dr. Bra Dr. Bromer style, all one? Sure. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, right. All one, that is the essence of all creation, right? And it holds the signature of everything in all potentiality. And then therefore, if you're trying to place your existence as self, you would then say that I am one in all in one. Three Musketeer stuff. Yes, yes, sure. D does that make sense? Y sure. You can you can propagate. So if you're in that Zen meditative state, you can propagate the thought process of I, n not the limited I, not the localized conscious of I, but the wholeness of I. It's the self. Sure, the self, this this nebulous state of being that is actually you that you can feel as the essence of your existence, right. but it's actually ginormous. It's not your body. It's not your mind. It's your 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 essence, higher self, higher self, self the yeah. essence. Like sure. I can feel my energetic propagation as self, right? And yeah. it's ginormous, right? So in that sense, I am the I in the all one or one. I am the essence of all creation and a propagation of the all I. Right, so there's one way to look at it, but then at the same time you can look at it as all one or one or one, like all one. <laughs> uh, also is I, but then I is also it, and then there's no difference between us. That's the second way to look at it. Yes, out but of the three. but no 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 no. This is not out of it. This is all. Out of three states of being, this is all one We're state of being. On okay. We're still on that one state of being. That is the pure potential of the wholeness and then you as the expression of that wholeness. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. So I could write a whole book 
on just that. I mean, and maybe the book will not even do, I could spend a lifetime talking about functionality of I as self, as this energetic form that is a representation of the whole, the all one, let's say, if we're Dr. Bronner or self. Right. So there's that. That's a form of existence. Okay. So then there's the second state of existence, which is no local, non-localized consciousness. Right. And so if you think of idea of propagation of all, of one, into a rudimentary form of existence, then you propagate the consciousness of all one as a reflection of you that is self in a non-localized interpretation. This is state two. Yes. State one is that where everybody in the world is? Or are they back at state zero before that? No, we're, yeah, we're. They're state zero. We're ants. So there's four states. We're ants. No, no, no. We are in lo in localized consciousness. So we're in, everybody's in state one. Yeah. Okay. No, no, state three, let's say. Yeah, we haven't got there yet. Yeah, we're, we haven't Where everybody there else yet. is. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So there's the essence of all that is oneness. In state State two. one. Uh, essence state of one. All. Non-binary state of being is a state two, right? Where you propagate the essence of oneness and a non, I'm sorry, non-localized, non-binary form of being. What do you mean when you say non-localized? Non, let's say non-form. We're a, before the veil. We're before the veil of separation. So when the when the essence of creation is was is right, he, I. A lot of people talk about this, so I will reference everything that I have heard, but I remember the sequence of events that has led us to this. So, you know, um, Matthias to Stefano talks about this. Um, the My book that I channeled talks about this. <laughs> uh, the Course of Miracles talks about this. I mean, Buddhism talks about this. Mystical Hinduism, mystical, you know, teaches Jesus uh, in the scenes. You know, Gnostics talk about this. Uh, I just have a personal interpretation of it. So maybe, maybe I, will, I don't know if I should reference the worldly interpretation of it or my personal interpretation of it. But they talk about, there you go. They talk about angels, right? And angels separating from the essence of creation and then angels deciding to interpret creation through, through the form of oneness as interpretation, right? Right. Reword that. So if if you are a form of, of oneness, if you are a form of everything and anything in the form of one form, right? What you seek is an expression, right? And oh, there you go. Do you remember the meditation that I was guided to record um, in understanding of um, creation of a universe? That is also a very limited structure, but I will just go with that. To the point where there was oneness, right? And then the oneness has a thought and then the thought splits into Vesica Pisces, right? Because then the oneness wants to experience itself. And then through the experience of self, then you have the duality of the two, right? You, you create the idea, duality is the one word. You create the idea of you watching you, right? And so for the longest time, it's just you watching you, right? Um, but the you watching you is one and one. Right, you're still in the non-binary split. So that form from the wholeness from from one into two designs an idea of one and one, but then expression of one into a one. And so non-localized consciousness is that is a propagation of that. Now through Vesica Pisces and then the propagation of the flower of life, we actually continue to then sequence that uh, sequence of events even further. Right, we go, okay, well, this one is experiencing this one, but then this one is experiencing this one, and then this one and this one. And so then we have the propagation of the five, right? And then the, through the propagation of the five, we go, wait, here's the five experience itself as one. And so like the most, um, if you reference, uh, you know, the flower of life design and, you know, the, the platonic solids or the Terence Howard's interpretation of the five, right? It is the most solid state of being is because you're still in that form, experiencing one on one, right? Um, but then at some point, you reach the potentiality where you want to experience something other than one on one, one and one, right? 
And then at that form, you build up on the concept, what if I design a world where it is not one experiencing one, the essence of everything experiencing another essence of everything, right? Because let's be honest, <laughs> it will get boring sooner or later. And so in my, ch in my book, do you remember I have a call, the chapter called, um, I don't remember what the chapter is called, but it, it was basically about a girl who, uh, yeah, who was at the essence of everything, and she, she, and they say she knew the universe, and she knew the stars, and she knew the Milky Way, and she knew the galaxies, and she knew everything, and she spent a lifetime of a lifetime, and of a lifetime, being in the space, knowing everything, and then at some point, the world or the universe saw that she was bored with the concept of everything, of one and one, and then they wanted to offer her a gift. And the gift was the gift of change and the change in the creation of the binary sequencings of one and zero. So maybe link to my book and then like maybe put a note of what chapter that's in. Right. And so the story of creation of our binary world was that chapter in my book. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So that's state two. Binary sequencing is state three. There's localized consciousness. If there's a separation of one and one. Into one and zero. Into one and zero. Okay. And so our veil is basically that. Our veil is a separation from one and one and then limited interpretation and non-localized consciousness of it. And then the localizing happens as we bypass the one and one, cross over into the veil, and we enter the into world of what binary. So, so here, here we are before we've come into this world. And we are in state two. 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 And, you know, that's all, that's all fine and good. But in as much as, you know, <laughs> you know, knowing everything and I, I can't understand how that would be, nee, you know, that sounds great. Knowing everything in a sense, but at the same time, you know, in eternity of, of, of that, you know, well, I don't know. Well, no, you know I, everything and then you experience everything through your knowing. There's some, yeah. there's some, uh, um, um, I guess benefit. There's a yeah, no, I, I there's see a the benefit, benefit to but, that. But if you spend enough lifetime in knowing everything and right. then experiencing everything through that knowing, um, it, it is just a way of being. Right. And it is a way of being. And, and so I understand that for the experience of what, what, would, what would it be like to not be this, you know, omniscient, omnipotent entity, well, let's see what that's like. So you go, you know, instead of, you know, everything, I, yes, everything, I, I, yeah, I got that, which, which would be the one. What if there's the opposite of that? Oh, that sounds exciting. Let's let's dive into that. And so we incarnate here. And then the the zero is almost necessary to the human condition in order to to because otherwise if there is no zero, we're back to where we were. Yes. No, yeah, yes, I understand. So we have to have the zero. We have to have death and the decay and you know things not existing or whatever, however you want to look at that. We we have to. We have to in order for us to be considered human. Right, like definitionally. Definitionally, human. I the fo the form of our existence, the 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 uh, right. uh, 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 participation of Earth as an entity um, in this state uh, is is the interpretation of binary sequencing. So we're we're living our our normal human life. It's one and zero. Yes, and then. Ideally, we go, wait a minute, here I am, you know, I love the one and, and I'm terrified of the zero. Well, we have to, right, from the conception of Earth, we, we believe the essence of us exists in, the, 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 right, that pass through the veil, that veil holds, by definition, it, it is actually, we exist by, in our form, through the consequences of binary sequences of ones and zeros. Right, that's it. That's all we have ever known because that is all we have come here to experience. Right. 
and you know, and you know, if you want evidence of this, if you ever see, if you ever, if you read the Yogananda book, um, um, autobiography of a yogi. Yeah, autobiography of a yogi. Right. He talks about all the rishis and the yogis who he have, have come across, who were enlightened beings, and then basically upon their death, what do they do? Their body dissolves. Like quite literally dissolves, not not like decays in the ground or you you know just, you burn their body. Goes, it just it poof, poofs. poofs away. Jesus style in, poofs. Into, nobody nobody will like this, into, but Jesus poofed. Yeah. Yogis poof. Everybody poofs. Yeah, into a what they call the light body, and your body body like literally turns to light. Yeah, but you go back and and depending on the story, all that's left is like. Teeth and fingernails, or something like that. Just yeah, a yeah. pile of teeth and fingernails. But you go back into the non binary state of one and one. Right. Can we achieve that in our. Human the goal body? is not to achieve that. I mean, like, I know that's the thing is all of us are being pulled into what, something. What are, the, what are the top tips to do this? Go on. <laughs> no, we're being right from the essence of our existence. What's interesting is. Even though we come here to experience the one and the zero, at all times, that little voice on the back of your head that you have heard forever, but you like at times choose to acknowledge or choose not to acknowledge, or you choose to drown out with drugs and alcohol uh, in addiction, is the part of you that exists outside of the veil, outside of the binary sequencing that is one and one, Right? So what I'm saying is there's always there has always been and there will always be will be you outside of the binary sequence of interpretation that is one and one even now but but then I will point out that you can interpret that being part of the first stage part of the second stage and then of course in here let's say this is the third stage so it's just how how you interpret it and how you connect to it to that part of you well what I'm saying is we have never been disconnected from that part of us Right, but it's so then it's how you, but how, right, we haven't been disconnected, but how, how much you embrace it and how, how you interpret it. Do you interpret that as the, the, the crazy voice in my head or do you interpret it as, you know, that is my higher unified being that I'm connecting, connecting to? Yeah. 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 Right. And so other dimensional beings, like most of the people in the galactic, um, um, federation, everybody who comes in and, and touches on that, most of them actually function in the one and one, right? And they interpret reality through one and one in that second state of being, right? And then, of course, then their their life is spent in the knowing, but at the same time, still not in the first state, which is complete encapsulation into existence right so the awareness into the fact that these states exist and that while maybe your meat sack of a body is is stuck in state three by the very nature of that's what human 3d existence is mm -hmm. that your a higher self which is in state one or two or I mean, both. we're all connected into one. So, at the, if right, if you had to pick something out as a goal in being, right, we are all striving towards something. We're being magnetized into something, right, and that something is the first state, or what I would even say, the primordial state of existence. Right. So, it, it's while well, we're stuck here, and that is what we experience in our day to day life. State three. Realizing that nurturing that connection to the higher self, which we which you would recognize is is in state one. All the spiritual teachings that everybody, you know, everybody is trying to find something, right? Like, oh, you know, everybody at sooner or later, whenever the universe smacks you in the fucking face, like it did to me, you're like, oh fuck, I have been ignoring something that has been lightly tapping me, you know, poking me here and there, right? And so eventually you get a whack. And if you don't listen to enough of those whacks, then eventually you have a life crisis and then, you know, you're almost done. And so, so yeah, so 
at all times, the universe or higher self or the essence of us is trying to allow us to start to interpret, which is what the goal of Buddhism is, is trying to interpret your being outside of the binary sequencing and start to allow yourself to open up to the connection of the non-localized consciousness that is still you, right? And then that localized consciousness, a l- enormous amount of information is held. Like all of your interpretation of self, let's say if you want to say that like past lives or future lives, um, a lot of people who channel entities that are them, right, come out of the non, non-binary or non-binary world or non-localized consciousness, right? Mm-hmm. And so if you open into that, and a lot of people are opening into that, and they're admitting to themselves, wait, like I'm experiencing something that I cannot quantify in ones and zeros. And, right. and that's the whole point of our existence is we can no longer spend our life living by the definitions of ones and zeros because nothing fits. And and that's the beauty of it. The ones and zeros don't fit. Like we quite right. literally are struggling to continue to exist the way we have because all of this information is coming in and it is vastly different than everything we have been interpreting with the ones and zeros. Right. So it's like we we created this ones and zeros world to to be born into. But here we're realizing that it is just this artificial Creation, construct. artificial construct. Yeah, the veil. The, the veil. This is the veil. The right? veil held and, the boundaries of ones and zeros. And I don't know. I mean, it, it being artificial, does that mean that that our three D bodies are still chained here, essentially? Maybe, maybe not. Or is that even kind of beyond the point? So this is the interesting part. This is. Uh, up until this memory came back, I had no idea that this would be happening. I, here's what I thought. I thought that this is super cool. This is like next level cool. Which I now realized like, oh, this was the point all along. I just like didn't remember it. When, when we designed the universe to be comprehended through binary sequencing, the goal was to build up enough non-localized consciousness in order to allow it to hold its own space, its own set of information that created within itself a whole other way of being that has not been the case in the non-localized consciousness with one and one, right? which holds infinite expression. Like infinite expression is quite literally held. The most potentiality of infinite expression is being held in our non-binary consciousness. I'm sorry, in our binary consciousness, in our localized consciousness, right? The nuance, the nuance of its expression, right? To where we are able to hold form, but at the same time, because we're still by default are part of the one and one sequencing, we're able to interface the two worlds. Does that make sense? So in this creation, we created, let's say, beings or offshoots of realities that hold the essence of binary while able to interface with non-binary. And so why we are driven into the world of non-binary sequencing is because the, the, the prime directive of our existence is to lock in the binary and then be able to experience non-binary at the same time. It's the best of both worlds. Yeah. You, you, get, you get both. You get this visceral binary experience while at the same time realizing that it is a construct and it is not the true nature of reality. It is just the perceived nature of this reality in order to have the experience. It's, but we it's, carry it's, the reali- bi- it's realizing that you have the VR goggles on. Sure, 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 sure. But through the progression of human existence and as we're going right now, the next phase is for us to open up, like completely open ourselves up to the 
known localized being, right, non-binary way of being, while holding the knowledge and the density, let's say density, that we have become familiar with and basically kind of like concretified within ourselves while we experience Earth in the binary functionality. And so the progress, so why everybody says, oh, everybody, everybody, the entire galaxy is watching Earth and Earth is important and blah, 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 blah. But no one really actually talks about why Earth is important. Earth is important is because we are the conceptualized interpretation of oneness in form of binary and non-binary being. Do you think other other entities that still have a 3D form are not in the existence, non-existence? Um, there are entities who are on Earth who take on a 3D form. Is that what you're asking? But, on Earth or or elsewhere, but you know, yeah, they, yeah, there they, are entities who hold a form, right? But but I guess holding a form doesn't mean you're in ones and zeros necessarily. There are so I will say this: there are entities. Most of the entities out there who hold form hold form within the recognition of parameters in ones and one. Right. So their form is actually held in one and one sequencing. I guess if we. If we had the, you know, innate, if we were born just with this fundamental knowledge that, well, yeah, I incarnated and then I will live my life and then I will, quote, die. But, you know, dying is just this particular body happens to expire. And then I, you know, go back to from whence I came and then I may, maybe, maybe not when at some point come back and incarnate again and I just do this over and over and over. It wouldn't be as, as one and zero, but that is still an experience someone chooses to have. Right? All, no, all no. The, I know that's an like experience. But Galactic Federation representatives that represent, you know, consciousness represent that consciousness with the innate experience of of one and one. Let me let me say it like this: We don't feel the one and zero when we. We put on the VR goggles and we play and, you know, we're in the middle of the, the world and we play it and then we take it off. And we're not like, it's not like this catastrophic zero. It's obvious to us that this is, this is a, a, a construct inside mm -hmm. of, inside of this, this game, right? Yeah. And that at any point we can pick it up and put it on or at any point we can take it off and put it down. Yeah. And it, it says it's a quote zero in as much as it's you're in it or you're not in it. Yes. But it's not a zero in in that it's real, in that it it has it is destroyed when you put it down. Yeah. In the same way that it, that to most people it feels like the life is just when you die, life has been destroyed. Yeah. But but what what we don't realize is what we're actually afraid of is not dying. It is the zero of seizing of being. Right. See, right. So, see, like, so, like, see, death is the concept that we have created here, to where that is what the the religious rhetoric has us fearing. But at the core, what we actually fear on our subconscious existence is we remember, because of our connection to one and one, right? Um, we remember the net separation of that veil, to where we were very viscerally believe that the second hit zero. It is bigger than death. It's the end of the world. It's bigger than death. Right. No, I mean, the, 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 the fundamental struggle of anything that is alive on this earth seems to be continue to exist. Yeah. At all costs. Yeah. Got to continue to exist. Yeah, yeah. No, whatever, everything that we do at, at a certain level, at least of Maslow's Pyramid, and maybe even all the way to the top, I have to think about that. But us, the plants, the animals... The, the microbes, the, 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 the fungi, everything. I got to continue to exist. And if possible, I got to make more of me. Yeah. Hopefully I can keep, keep existing it, and it, make more of me. It's prime directive. Right. And that's, yeah. that's, that is fundamental to, yes. Yes. to everything on this planet. Yeah. So what I wanted to say is what we're going through right now is our non-localized consciousness coming in on board. And then the basic kind of like, uh, dissolving this veil, we will have to go into one through a zero. 
we the zero doesn't disappear and then we go oh look here's rainbow and here's jesus and here's one that is not what will happen to us we will have to go into one through a zero so what you know happened to me over the last month when i was raping and mollying and roofing myself um that is <laughs> to some extent how my interpretation uh of integration from zero into one looks like. Mm -hmm. Because in essence, what you're doing is you're having to dive in into the deepest psyche of your subconscious because your subconscious is holding on to the highest extent to the binary sequencing. We are locked in and loaded for survival by holding on to the binary sequencing. And, you know, I say this and I hope it is coming through. It is b bigger than life and death. It, it, it will be the biggest dissolvement of self that we'll have to face, not conceptually. Like what I'm saying is my cognitive being quite literally recognized what is that I'm going through as I'm channeling this information through and my conscious being, I am quite literally aware of what is it that I'm facing. But subconsciously, the programming of self-survival and self-preservation with the binary sequencing is so strong that to override it is insanity. It feels like insanity. Yeah, I, I mean, I can see that. It, no, it, thankfully with me, I will say this. I have been told that all of my visceral experience of, of integration will happen in my dreams. And so thankfully, my life has been spared to where they said, they asked me a question. I, 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 at some point, I asked them, why am I having all of these visceral dreams that are like earth shattering and all shaking? Uh, and then they said, wouldn't you rather experience the most visceral experience in the dream sequencing as opposed to in your real life? Right. Where and it's I went safe. Well, where, yeah, right. Like, like technically, you get there's to, no you, difference. You get to experience the zero without having to 3D live the zero. Yeah. You, Right, you right. you wake it's up. Re it's real. You in the wake dream. up. You, you wake up, and the trauma that you would have deposited from your three dimensional interpretation of binary sequencing is not there. And so, I thankfully received that gift a long time ago. Yeah. So the visceral experience of our expression, right, is interpreted in the ones and zeros, right? And then, right now, ourselves is having to dissolve. It's being in order to allow the one and one to come on board. Right. Right, because this being can't comprehend one and one without going through some sort of dissolution. Yeah. I mean, I guess that dif dissolution may look different for different people. Yes. Yeah. yeah. You've got it. You've got it nice and gentle, but n maybe not everybody does. Yeah. Yeah. You know, now that the memory came back on board, I it's strange because I'm like, oh yeah, I what I didn't realize is that I have had the connection to one and one all along. We all we all do. Yeah, no, but I right. Yes, I will say we all do, right? So anytime all these people right now are remembering the stuff or and even have been remembering, right? If you open to the concept of the one and one. You know, to some extent, if you go further enough, right? Like it's almost like I, you, I almost see it as a waveform. Like there, there, um, to Robert, uh, uh, um, Rupert Sheldrake's uh, point, right? The the consciousness is a morphic consciousness, right? And so, in our localized consciousness, a localized consciousness holds within the idea of binary sequencing, right? And so it, it, the veil is created through the binary sequencing of our morphic consciousness. And right now, you know, basically kind of like on the twofold aspects, as the one in one is amplifying um, its reach, and then more and more of us are waking up to the understanding of one and one, the boundary, the veil, right? is dissolving and so the the binary consciousness almost like becomes fluid and so that's why from the quantum mechanics standpoint we're experiencing havoc because at some point 
depending on your state of being or your particular set of experiments, you can have ones and ones being ones, on ones being ones and zeros being zeros. But as the, the morphic resonance changing and passes the veil, right, passes the conscious interpretation of ones and zeros, at some states, they're just one and one. And so, um, you know, who, who, who touched on this, the three body problem? Um, I don't remember. You- I heard it was renewed. Oh, yeah. And, and, and they promised an epic finale. In the last season, the second season? I don't know. It was supposed to be three seasons, but I don't know if it was oh, new okay. for two or three. Do you, you clarify this because I don't remember the exact details, but um, I'm trying to think. Wait. Um, it's wait. Is that the show? Is this the show that started out with scientists basically committing suicide because all of a sudden the science is not working how it's supposed to be working? Well, it. Yes, but I don't think it was because of that. But yeah, no. What I, the yes. only the only thing I want to draw from the three bodies because I will, if I start to draw three bodies into our world, everyone will flip the fuck out. So the only thing that I want to say that that I that that poked my memory was the fact that science wasn't working how we perceived it before. Yeah. Right. And then that, that is because at this point we're opening ourselves up to the concept of the actual truth of one and one as opposed to one and zero. Um, I will say this, you know, this is going to be a, a weird interpretation of it, but we are always in a state of one and one, but our gun ho interpretation of binary sequencing eliminated the one and in the scientific interpretation it is because we refuse to admit to such thing as ether, right? Yeah. So, you know, if I had to throw in an er- earthly term there um, that we, we don't account for, um, you know, Nassim is doing research on that. Um, but that is what one and one is. One and one, it, past, the, the, past the, the binary sequencing, a localized consciousness exists as us actually interpreting what's around us, right? Because binary by default means here or not here, but then we don't actually look for is anything in between or which is also one. And then the fact that zero is not even a zero. Yeah, yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Right. So the second we will start to open our one laws of physics, I say laws of physics, but actual interpretation of reality that's what the truth is to something outside of a binary sequence of events or binary interpretation uh, we will allow ourselves to touch on infinite information and then that that i think that is what i was saying is i saw it as waveform right so you can you can basically decide which wave in your interpretation or which morph- morphic field you can choose to dive into because everything functions in this way format. Yeah. And so in the second state of being in the non-binary uh, w- world, you just basically reach into a space and you can draw in any information, any reality, any thought, any uh, comprehension. Um, and then thus, you know, you kind of, interestingly, in that space of one and one, functioning in a completely different set of beings. But our earthly experience here right now is basically destined to experience the transitory state between binary to non-binary. Right. Right. Makes sense. Yeah. Any interpretations other than that? I mean, I guess I, when you first explained it, I was confused. So this, this helped clear it up a lot for me. You first explained when it came in? Yeah. Yeah. No, it is absolutely beautiful, right? For me, I think what, what besides the fact that I remembered being there and, and you know, being excited about the concept of it, uh, it, it was kind of like a twofold. I was excited about the, I got excited because I remembered the concept of this creation. Uh, and the decision to do this, and then I, and I got super excited because at some point I realized I will remember the fact that 
I did this at some point, you know, that this was like a goal. And then now this is the reverb of that goal, right? And so to be on the end, and, you know, if I'm remembering, then there's no way I'm the only person remembering this, right? There, right? If it was a, if it was a conscious event by, um, by a, you know, a galactic interpretation of consciousness, uh, there's other people who are interpreting themselves as humans in this form right now who would remember that decision. Right. Uh, so hopefully, this will spark somebody's memory if they are not remembering. Yeah, and then you know, there's there's like Im immense amount of excitement that I feel with this memory, the conscious memory, and then what's getting ready to happen to humanity. Now, to me, it is exciting because I see both <laughs> the good and the bad as the good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but obviously, I guess depending on where you are, your own. It, interpretation or experience of it may not be pleasant i guess yeah no it's it for those who will hold on to the binary um binary sequencing um and choose to exit out you know they will choose to exit out in that um confined representation of reality uh because that is you know for all extended purposes, I, I always say this very nonchalantly, but, but it is because that is the choice of their interpretation of this uh, local consciousness. Yeah, that's the experience they were here to have. Yeah, right. And so because the earth is opening to something else, you will have a group of people who will simply like never even acknowledge the possibility of a one. One and one as opposed to one and zero, right? So you'll have that group. Uh, and then they will obviously put up an immense fight uh, attempting to to hold on as hard as they can to the binary um, design. Yeah. Um, and then you'll have some people who are meant to open, but their, you know, their path to opening will be met through vast resistance right in my case my vast resistance was in the dream state of mauling and roofing myself right but you can imagine most of the people will not be interpreting that in their dream state and they'll actually be interpreting that in real world i guess right real world right, right. Uh, and so therefore that's could gonna look, look pretty could, yeah it could look like anything no it's gonna look very interesting and so that that is what you know I think this podcast is going to publish, you know, at least five or six weeks. I think it'll be in June, late June. Okay, yeah. So, as you, you're listening to the world right now, maybe July. Um, it it looks different than it does in May when we're recording this. Yeah. So, so just if if anything else, just look back from where you're hearing this right now to May, and think, oh yeah, things were different. And it will only get more different. <laughs> but if you if you start to tune in into the transmission that is this podcast, and you start to tune in into this knowledge, and start to interpret that, right? And I think as we were continuing to record these podcasts, there will basically kind of be nuances in place on this interpretation and this progression. Um, it will through sequencing bring up the memories that you already have within. Yeah. And through the connection to the one and one um, non-binary state that you already have at your core, uh, you just have to basically open to it. But what I will point out, open to it while holding the essence of yourself as a human form in the binary being, right? So you have to integrate one into the other as opposed to, right? Because you will never be able to dissolve the the binary, right? You're You're not ridding yourself off in binary because we came here to experience binary form. So it's, at this it's, point... It's not ridding, it's an integration. Yes. So the, I wanted to say that, right? Many people who ascend, right? Uh, you know, when Jesus ascended, uh, he left his being out of the binary into the non-binary through, th through this redirect, right? And that is a way to do it, but that is not 
what we came here to experience if you're listening to the podcast and then you're not, you know, Buddha or Jesus. Uh, what we came here to do is experience our own form of ascension while holding the binary sequencing. And it's very different. Right. It's the integration. It's yeah. not leaving one to go to the other. It's integrating. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that process looks a little bit different than, than Jesus and Buddha and Krishna's ascension, right? Yeah. So, yeah, there's that. Take it or leave it. <laughs> mm. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.